flashes and Joe Bar. Good to listen. Get the favorite songs to me and turn number 109. 56.
prayer request tonight. <laughs> At this point, we do need to continue to be in prayer for our revival. In Bible school, we got, we're got we coming up on the, the busy time of the year, so to speak. We need prayer for all of those things that are forthcoming. We do need to be in prayer for all those that were uh, impacted by the storm. Uh, a lot of people have lost everything. We need to be in prayer for just all those that were affected, especially those who lost loved ones. Anything, any others? Right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we bow before you, and Father, we are so thankful for the lot of us, the opportunity we have to come here tonight to once again uh, look into your word, to worship you. Father, for our service, what we had throughout the day, and as we go throughout uh, the rest of our services, help us to truly be uh, focused upon you and your word that we might be encouraged and strengthened through your word. Lord, we do ask that you would bless all these prayer requests. We have many that are uh, sick or battling through different diseases or illnesses. Father, heal them. Give them back their strength. To be with those that have lost loved ones, come to them. Help them to find the peace and strength that is in you in those times. Lord, do help us as a church to continue to be a light, a witness to you here in our community. Help us to be mindful of things that we need to be doing. Help us to have the grace and strength we need to accomplish them. Lord, do forgive us of our sins and of our shortcomings. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. Number 197. forward.
We have been looking uh, the last couple of weeks at some of the uh, foundational truths of Scripture, in particular as it relates to the the nature of God, the fact that, that God is. From the very opening verses of Scripture, the uh, existence of God is not disputed. It is not uh, something debated or argued. It simply says in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Uh, God is. And he always has been, uh, will always be. He is God. Uh, and we're man. Uh, we were created in the image of God. Uh, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. A uh, male female, he created him. But, uh, we are created in the image of God. But God is. Uh, and he will always be. We looked at the fact that God is eternal. And then last week we looked at the fact that God is holy, uh, and he is uh, separate. He is completely free of any uh, imperfection, any wrong. He is holy. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at uh, another one of the truly uh, unique attributes of God uh, that it truly sets him apart from us. That's one of the attributes of God that uh, as we strive to consider it, as one of those things that kind of uh, his ways are not our way. But that is, we're going to be talking tonight uh, a little bit about the immutability of God. Uh, we'll look at a couple of different scriptures, but Malachi chapter 3, uh, verse 6, uh, is uh, really, uh, to me anyway, probably one of my favorite verses that deal uh, with the idea of the immutability of God. Uh, and it simply says, uh, Malachi 3 and in verse 6 he says, uh, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, but you said, Wherein shall we return? Well, pause our reading right there. Uh, God God and he is unchanging that uh, simple statement there in the first part of verse 6 he said I am the Lord I change not uh, the immutability of God is simply the fact that God is immutable that is he doesn't mutate he doesn't change we worded that in several different ways but really the immutability of God is the fact that God is unchanging and he's unchanging uh, which this does not mean that he is immobile or inactive, but it means that he is never inconsistent, growing, or developing. That's the way Rattery put it, or uh, maybe a little bit simpler definition. Uh, the mutability of God is his freedom from change, and his being the same at all times, both past, present, and future. Uh, it is a simple fact that God is unchanging, and he is unchangeable. Uh, the God is the same uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That sounds familiar because that's a quotation from the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, but in that verse it didn't say God, it said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, that's one of the verses that speak to us of the divinity, that is of the deity of Christ. We know that Christ is God because he's immutable. He's the same yesterday that he is today and that he will be uh, tomorrow. But that's the same concept. It applies to both God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, they are unchanging. Uh, they're the same today as they were yesterday. They're going to be a lot. And if we live another 50, 60 years, we're the same thing. And on into eternity future, he will continue uh, to be the same. Uh, God is unchanging. And he is un changeable. Uh, this is the one the God that James uh, in the New Testament uh, said that uh, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness or shadow of turning. James 1 uh, and 17. There is no variableness. There is no change nor shadow of of turning. Uh, God is consistent and he is uh, immutable. He is unchangeable. 
Now that does not mean that he is immobile or inactive by that meaning. It doesn't mean that God just sits around and doesn't do anything. Uh, he is indeed very active. He has been. He's the one who spoke the world into existence. He's continuously uh, active in the world today. But what's important to consider about that is how distinct that he is from a great many of the pagan religions uh, and of the many false gods that exist in our world and how truly different uh, that is uh, from even the way that we understand things in the most basic of sense. Everything that we know of uh, changes. Uh, change is a consistent in this life. Everything we know of today changes. From the very moment that Adam sinned uh, and brought into being death, uh, you know, the same moment, right? everything deteriorates and falls apart. Everything around us changes. You know, they say the only thing that stays the same is everything changes. Uh, your body changes. You know, you, you grow older, uh, you, you get taller, and you get more developed, and then you get uh, older, and you may start to shrink a little bit, but nonetheless, your body changes. Uh, your body doesn't look anything the way it did 20 years ago, and it doesn't look the same way it's going to look like in eternity when you receive the glorified body. Um, uh, it's does. Uh, it changes. You know, look around the, the earth around us. You know, uh, look at the animals. The animals don't stay the same. You know, animals are born, but yet their lifespans are much shorter than ours, so... You know, we can watch a dog that's born, and we can see it grow and uh, develop, mature, and then eventually it'll die, and it'll get buried, uh, and it'll grow back to the ground, uh, and it'll be buried there. Everything changes. And there is no consistency there. Everything always changes. But with God, there is no change. God doesn't change. He doesn't grow older. He doesn't develop over the course of time. God is not maturing today. You know, God is not sitting in the heavens today growing older and growing wiser. He's not some wise, benevolent, uh, old individual sitting up there getting wiser over the course of time. And he's immutable. And he is the same today as he was yesterday and the same as he will be tomorrow. Uh, he is perfect. Uh, he is without error and without fault. And therefore, he is immutable. Think about the gods of our world today. You, know, you can go back into the Old Testament times and look at the uh, the great rebukes of idolatry and how that, you know, the people shape and carve out these idols. You know, at one time Isaiah was rebuking them and saying, you know, consider the foolishness of this. One man goes out, he plants a tree, and then eventually another man comes along, cuts down the tree. He takes some of the wood from the tree and he makes a fire out of it to keep warm. He takes some of the wood from that tree and uses it to cook his food. And then he takes some of the wood from that tree and carves it to an image and says it's God. So the same tree that he's worshiping as a god is also the one that is in the fire warming him. <laughs> also the one using the to cook his food. How foolish is that? Uh, it's always changing. You know, their gods were always changing in character and demeanor. Uh, they were always inconsistent. Uh, and they were never the same. Their gods had to be bowed down, moved, and taken apart to get from one place to the other. But God is unchanging. He's unchanging. Uh, our God is the same today as he was yesterday. Uh, this speaks to his uh, complete uh, and his uh, divine nature. Uh, you and I understand things through the concept of time through the lens of time. The fact that everything moves and shifts. God is outside of time. This goes back to when we spoke of how that God is eternal. God is the one who created time. He sees all of time as an instant. He's the one outside uh, looking in. He sees all of time. He is unchanging. He's ever relevant. That is why uh, what this speaks to us is the fact that we can look into the Old Testament times and you can read the biblical accounts of the book of Genesis. Uh, you can look at the way that God uh, dealt with Abraham. Uh, and you can look at the way that he interacted with him. And that's the very same God that's interacting with Moses and with uh, Paul. And with you and I today, God is unchanging. Uh, he never has changed. He's the same God, the same God that was loving and made covenants with Abraham. He is still uh, the same today. Uh, he, he is unchanging. He's unalterable. Uh, that means his uh, nature doesn't change. God is not going to one day sit there and go, you know what? Uh, you people are just rebellious. Uh, you refuse to listen. So you know what? I've changed my mind. Uh, salvation isn't going to be by grace anymore. You don't deserve it. I'm just going to wipe you all out and start over again. God's not going to do that. Uh, he is beautiful. He's 
faith, uh, the immutability of his counsel is the way the author of Hebrews described it in Hebrews 6 and 17. His counsel is untainted. So when God determines something, and when God sets something in motion, that is exactly what is going to uh, happen and what is going to come to pass. His counsel is immutable. He said, I don't have to worry and wonder if, well, God's going to change his mind. Well, well, God may change. You know, God said it was by grace today, but you know, hey, he'll change it tomorrow. You know, God, God may change on down the road. No, God is immutable. He doesn't change. He's not developing over the course of time. He's not going to change his decrees. All of these things are going to stand. They will continue to stand, uh, which is why that the immutability of God uh, even though it is one of those uh, doctrines at times that is uh, deep at times. You, know, you, can, you can very easily get out of the shallow waters into the deep end. Uh, but yet, it's also perhaps one of the most applicable and one of the most important attributes of God uh, for you and I to understand and to realize. It bears so much implication into our daily lives and into the way that you and I are supposed to think to reason through things. You know, in those verses that we read in Malachi 3, uh, when God said, I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you are not consumed, O Jacob. Why is it that God's people are not consumed, destroyed, and wiped out? It wasn't because of them. <laughs> you know, it had nothing to do with them. It didn't have anything to do with their goodness or with their obedience because most of the time Israel was the opposite of that. They're consistently rebellious. They're consistently going against God's word. And they're consistently doing everything opposite of what God said and wanted them to do. God said, I am Lord. I change not. Therefore, you are not consumed. It was the very unchangeable nature of God that had preserved and had kept Israel in the position that they were in. If God had changed, then Israel wouldn't have been there. But you see, God had made promises. God had made determinations in his counsel. He had chosen Israel as a nation. Uh, he had made a covenant with them, and he had promised them to continue to exist. And because of that fact, Israel still exists. In spite of their rebellion, in spite of their many <laughs> chastisements from the Lord, they continued to exist. The immutability of God assures us that the things that God has said will indeed come to pass. And God cannot lie. It goes against his very nature. He's unchanging. Uh, and it, this brings us great assurance. Because you and I can rest assured today that everything that God has promised, since God cannot change, and God will not change, these things will indeed truly uh, come to pass. Uh, this is why our salvation is so secure. Uh, this is why we have such assurance in this life of that. Uh, that's why Paul, uh, in speaking uh, to Timothy uh, in First and Second Timothy, uh, rather two and thirteen, he said, "If we uh, lose faith, uh, he by faithfully cannot deny uh, himself." If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. I think I missed the word in that quotation the first time. Uh, but nonetheless, 2 Timothy 2 and 13, uh, God is unchanging. If we believe not, which we all have moments where we don't believe the way we should, our faith fails. Our salvation is dependent upon that. It's dependent upon the unchanging nature of God. If we believe not, he abides faithful. Why? Because he cannot deny himself. God's unchanging. What he has said will come to pass. He doesn't change. How grateful today we ought to be because of the fact that God's uh, that God is unchanging, uh, that our salvation is secured and permanent, and the unchangeable nature uh, of God. Now, what He says, what He has determined, will indeed come to pass. God does not change His mind. God does not change His nature. Uh, he is the same today as He will be uh, tomorrow. The immutability of God, though, not only speaks to the unchanging nature of God, but it also reflects upon the unchanging nature uh, of God's Word. And the sense that 
uh, we can rest assured that his counsel is unchanged. Yeah, the, the immutability of his counsel uh, and of his word. Uh, God doesn't change, therefore his word also doesn't change. What God has said in the past is still very much true uh, today and is still relevant today. God isn't going to change his word because our culture changes. God isn't going to change his word today uh, because, well, we, we're just too uh, incapable. We're just not strong enough to live by uh, God's standard to live by his word, so he's just going to uh, uh, change it and make it easier for us. Uh, Psalm 33 and 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. God's word is God's word. The counsel of the Lord is the counsel of the Lord, and it shall stand. You know, you see this a lot today. People want to change the word of God. They want to change what it says because it's just not... Uh, uh, culturally acceptable anymore. Uh, well, God didn't really mean that homosexuality was a sin. That's not really what he meant. He just meant if you aren't born that way, it was a sin for you to do it. He's got all kinds of crazy uh, concoctions and ideas that have no basis in any type of scientific or medical fact. Uh, it doesn't matter. Because what God has said, God has said. We can't change God's word just because we don't like it. We can't change God's word because it doesn't fit what we want. And that's the opposite of what God said for us to do. God's unchanging. What was holy and right in Old Testament times is still holy today. It's still a standard that we are to live by. Our challenge as God's children, our responsibility as God's children, they have always been to conform our lives to the standard of Scripture, uh, not to conform Scripture to our lives. Uh, you can twist and mingle and distort Scripture all you want to, but that doesn't make it Right. God's word and God's standard is the same. Truth is unchanging. God is unchanging. His counsel uh, stands forever. Uh, God is unchanging. And we find great assurance in that today. We find great strength in that today. We know that as we anchor ourselves in the rock of ages, uh, we find the strength to press on. Uh, we are changing, always changing. Uh, the world around us is consistently changing and altering. Uh, but we anchor ourselves in the consistent, unchanging force uh, that he is God. Uh, God is good. Uh, God is unchanging and unchangeable. Uh, God is eternal. Uh, he always has been, always will be. Uh, God is holy, uh, and God is immutable. Uh, he's unchanging. Uh, he is not maturing and growing older and wiser today. Uh, he stands the same as he was the day he made the Lord. And God is truly immutable. Uh, if you will, let's have a word of prayer tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to assemble here tonight to once again look into your word. Thank you for the lessons and for the encouragement that it gives to us. Father, thank you for your name, for knowing that you are truly unchanging and that you are the same today as you were yesterday and that you will continue to be in the future. Father, help us to ever live lives in the assurance of knowing that we can truly trust in you and rely upon you when things are difficult. For Father, it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I had the good to see everybody that made it out to Saracens today. Remember, Saracens is Wednesday night, which it will be fellowship night because it is uh, the first Wednesday of April. Oh, that was not saying that. Uh, so this is the second day of April. So we're already uh, quickly moving through this year. Just keep that in mind. Anything else before we dismiss? Nothing then if you will stand and by the name dismiss us in prayer, please. Thank you again, Lord, for allowing us to 